So let's take some questions. Okay, here we go. I see a question here. Uh, do you want to increase bandwidth to 25K? Um, assume you're talking about on the channel setting there. Let's see. Actually, that may be a, for, let's see here. That may be something that needs doing on that to work for amateur radio. Um, let me see. That is a good question. Uh, Okay, maybe one of our, that is a, that's a good question. It's been a while since I've set one of these up like that. Uh, maybe someone, one of our, our techs will be able to, uh, to give me some guidance there, but that's a fantastic question. Uh, I want, we're definitely coming back to this one, by the way. I want to make sure you get the correct answer there. Um, okay, here's a question. Glenn asks, say I am listening uh, on a repeater in a zone. I transmit and wait. Uh, but after a few moments, my Anytone 878UV2 Plus mysteriously switches to another zone on the screen. What is going on? Um, yeah, so Glenn, if, if your radio is switching to another zone and you, you haven't like pressed any buttons or told it to do that, uh, that shouldn't be happening, uh, at least mysteriously. Uh, you may want to check your firmware. I know there's some firmware uh, that may have gotten released some places out there that's a, a beta firmware. Uh, so definitely give, a, give our tech team a call. We can help you verify that it's not like a beta firmware uh, because there's a, there's a few beta firmwares that got out that may have some bugs and we can get you set up on a stable firmware. Uh, or if that's not the problem, we'll get it taken care of for you. Yeah, and, and uh, that's a fantastic question. So you would actually want to have your bandwidth set to 25K. So we'll program that again here real quick. Uh, I've been working with DMR so much lately that I uh, almost forgot all about that. So. Uh, I appreciate you pointing that out. So we'll switch that over to 25K uh, on that bandwidth. And then we'll write this to the radio again. Write to radio, other data. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll actually reach someone this time. There we go. Okay, Ken, WQ9V asks, what is the scan feature for? Um, yeah, so the scan feature on these radios uh, now, it, it's not a, a, a proper scanner. I, I definitely keep that in mind. If you're wanting a scanner, definitely buy a scanner. Uh, but it's perfect for scanning through small sets of channels, like the weather channels, for example. Uh, I have them programmed in. I'll turn scan on and scan through those weather channels. Or if you want to program in some local repeaters, it can scan through those local repeaters. It's perfect for that. Uh, what, what it's not good for is going through like a list of 100 channels scanning through them. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If, as long as you use it for the right things, it works great. Okay, here, we'll try this again real quick. Uh, like I said, I don't, I, I don't expect us to reach it just because of where we're at in the studio, but we'll give it a shot. This is Cody, W3AMG, uh, trying out the local repeater here on my newly programmed radio. Anyone copy? Okay, take some more questions here. Ed asks, in CPS, what is the friends list? Uh, let me see here. I am not familiar with the friends list myself. Um, let's see, we have a scan list. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually like to learn about that. Maybe if, if you folks have some information on that in the chat, um, maybe you could point me in the direction to where that is. I, I'm not, oh, let's see. Uh, Ed also asks, does the CPS have a find function in it? Uh, so unfortunately, there isn't like a find function in the CPS to, to find something in it, like a control F. Uh, that would be nice to add. We'd like to see that in the future. Um, but yeah, if you, all, if you guys know where the friends list is located, uh, be happy to provide some information on it. Here we go. David, N8POT, will your hotspot do D-Star and DMR uh, plans fusion, I think. Um, so yeah, the, the SkyBridge, we've got one down here. The SkyBridge Dual Band Digital Hotspot, it'll do DMR, uh, D-Star, System Fusion, NXDN, and P25. It'll actually do all of them. And it cross modes between most of them. Uh, so if you have your radio and you want to get a, a SkyBridge, that's going to allow you to not only 
use it with your radio, uh, but probably any radio you'll get down the road. And you can even try out some of those other modes with your radio uh, currently. So it's, a, it's an awesome little tool there. Uh, not all the hotspots out there can do that. Uh, impaired with the, the screen, the big screen on it, makes it super easy to use. So great question. Here we go. James asked, uh, can I set up the SkyBridge Plus as a local repeater for when I go uh, out, I think out of town is what he's referring to. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So James, the SkyBridge is going to act kind of like your own personal repeater. It's not going to be a repeater for other people to use uh, it specifically, but if you want to go out of town, you can take this with you, connect it up to like your cell phone's Wi-Fi, and it will work just the same way it is, did for you in your house uh, on your road trip anywhere around the country. You won't have to reprogram it. So uh, it'll, it'll be perfect for you as kind of a personal device, personal repeater, connect you into that network just like any other DMR repeater would. Um, but in terms of being a, a repeater that other people are all going to be able to use, that's not what it's for. Oh, here we go. Sam, uh, WS4BSA asks, what is the wattage for turbo, high, medium, and low power settings? Uh, so I know that the wattage for turbo on these radios is 7 watts VHF and 6 watts UHF. Um, as for the lower tiers and what those wattages are, uh, I don't have that off the top of my head. That would be awesome to know. Uh, if you folks know that in the chat, uh, definitely post it out there. We'd, we'd love to hear that. But for, for turbo, uh, you're getting 7 watts VHF and 6 watts UHF. WB2DX asks, will they do SSB or single sideband? Uh, no. So these radios are, are just uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, uh, uh, just standard analog and digital radios. So they're, they're not going to do single sideband, uh, but they will do DMR. So you can talk to people all around the world on DMR. Okay, here we go. Tom asks, uh, do you need to set an offset? Uh, that's a good question. So an offset in terms of uh, sometimes it can be referred to here, like the offset is uh, negative uh, 0.6. Um, so that's automatically going to be set when you set your downlink and uplink frequencies. Now, sometimes they'll just give you one and tell you either a positive or a negative offset. Uh, in that case, you, the one frequency is going to be your receive and then your transmit's either going to be, uh, you know, plus 0.6 or negative 0.6 based on that. In this case, it would be negative. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, now, if you're referring to it in the CPS, sometimes there's options for an offset. Uh, I know on the radios you can do one. That is actually for uh, changing your, your radio's alignment, if you will. So if it's consistently outputting the wrong frequency, you can actually adjust that. Uh, so it's right on frequency. Really, you never need to do that on these. We've never had one that you had to, uh, but it is cool it can do that. If for some reason you're ever, your radio ever got off of frequency, you could change it. Jesse asks, hey Cody, can you explain listening to multiple talk groups? Uh, can I do that from the radio itself? Awesome, Jesse. Yeah, so uh, with talk groups, uh, generally you're just going to be able to listen to one at a time because uh, you actually have to key into it to listen to it. Um, now, if you're listening to a local repeater and multiple people are on different talk groups, uh, you could use digital monitor with uh, you know, all your time slots open and probably listen to multiple of those uh, you know, conversations, if you will, at one time. But generally for talk groups, it's going to be one at a time. Greg asks, uh, what does miss call mean in DMR mode? It's annoying. Um, yeah, that's a great question, Greg. Uh, so typically that means someone, uh, you know, someone chimed in. And uh, if, if you weren't, as for, as for what it's specifically telling you, it just means someone uh, talked to you. I believe there is a way to turn that off. If any of you folks know that in the chat, let us know. Help Greg out. Uh, but like if, if you get that message and you dismiss it, typically you'll see who that caller was. It'll show you that. Okay, here we go. WB2DX asks, uh, how long is the battery life from full to no longer usable? Uh, great question. So the battery life, uh, that's one thing I personally really like about these radios. Uh, I've had some other radios that end up, you know, being dead when you need them. These batteries last just about forever. And with them being lithium, even if you're not using the radio, they still pretty much keep a charge. Uh, so it's all going to depend how much you use it. But if you use it, you know, a, a fair amount, uh, you know, some every day, you're probably going to get at least a couple weeks out of it. Uh, I've had some radios go for a few months, you know, with with use here and there, and they're still running strong. If you're transmitting at hours on end every day, uh, it's probably just going to last you a few days. 
um, or a, a couple days. But just keep that in mind. The battery life on these is absolutely fantastic. And one of the other cool things, you can actually take the battery out and charge it in the charging cradle. Uh, that way you can always have one charging and then swap it out with your, your other battery when it comes time to change it. Yeah, so Dallas asks, I goofed up my, Sky, my Bridgecom uh, purchase SkyBridge. Do you offer repair services? Absolutely, Dallas. Yeah, we'd be happy to help you with that. Uh, give us a call, 816-532-8451, and uh, our tech team will definitely get you sorted out there. Uh, we might even be able to help you fix it without even you know, sending it in for repair. We can probably help you with it uh, right there in, in your own home, but if not, we'll definitely get it taken care of for you. Awesome. Hey, Ray chimed in with some information on the frequencies. Thank you, Ray. Uh, so Turbo, as we discussed, is, is 7 watts VHF, 6 watts UHF. High is 5 watts, and these are for both. Uh, medium is 2.5 watts, and low is 1 watt. So thank you, Ray. That's awesome. Here we go. Here's another question. Uh, how, how do you turn off the beep that is heard when a person uh, de-keys or the channel drops? Yeah, that's a great question. So if we pull up the CPS here, uh, we can open up the optional settings. And then, let's see here. Go to volume and audio. Uh, well, that might not be the right section. Let's see. Alert tone, here you go. This is what you want to customize. Uh, so under the alert tone section, that's going to give you the, you the ability to customize uh, all of those different tones uh, when someone's, uh, you know, the, the talk per minute, just all the different tones. You can change that here. Uh, in fact, if, you, if one of them is annoying but you want to keep it, you can even change the, uh, the hertz on what those tones are as well. So definitely check that out. Uh, you should be able to change all of your tone settings from there. Rubber asks, uh, when a scan stops, it says that the channel um, it says set, it, it stays on that channel. Uh, is there a way to make it start up again after a few seconds? Okay. Um, so what's happening is he's scanning, it's staying on that channel, and he wants to make it start up again after a few seconds. So uh, if that channel is not active, it should do that. It should continue scanning. Uh, so you may want to play around with your squelch if you're an analog. Uh, make sure that you know it could still be hearing something on that channel. Uh, it's when I have mine set and scan, if, if, if someone uh, stops talking on that channel or whatever transmission's coming through stops, it'll keep scanning. So uh, definitely make sure there's not a signal coming through. And if, if it doesn't appear to be, maybe, maybe crank, crank up your squelch a notch, uh, see if that fixes that for you. If not, give us a call, we'll help you out with it. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you learned something from today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell next to it to make sure you don't miss out on any more great content. That's all I have for you today. I'm Cody, W3AMG, 73.